Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on classification. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Taxonomy is the science of naming and classifying organisms. So first let's talk about Carl Linnaeus. So in the 1700s, Linnaeus developed this system for naming and classifying organisms. There was kind of a need for it because people really didn't speak the same language necessarily in scientific terms. So the Linnaean system uh, there's two things that made it really, really successful, and that was, number one, there were taxonomic groups, and number two, the whole system of binomial nomenclatures. So we're going to look at both of these in this lesson. So first, taxonomic groups. A taxon is a group of organisms in the classification system. Now, the plural for uh, taxon is taxa, just for your information. Now, if we look at our taxonomic groups, they go from all the way from domains all the way down to species. Now, domain is the most broad category here, and species is the most specific. So everything is divided up. Uh, all of the, the species that we know of are divided into domains, kingdoms, uh, phyla, classes, orders, families, genera, which is a plural for genus, and species. So the, the way this kind of developed over time is if you talk about, okay, kingdoms, uh, before domains were introduced more recently, um, in the Linnaean times, there were uh, two kingdoms. There were animals and there was plants, and that's pretty much all you had. And then about 100 years passes, and then we discovered protists, so we added a third kingdom. And then pretty shortly after that, we had a fourth kingdom, which was the Monaran kingdom. Then we had five kingdoms because we added fungi. And then there's a sixth kingdom because we added... Uh, uh, bacteria, archaea, and, and all this. So um, we've actually developed over time when we actually start looking at all the different species that we've discovered uh, over the past you know, several hundred years. So if we're going to look at one example here, we've got uh, the gray wolf on the right and we've got the coyote on the left. Now these species are different, but only the species part of it is different. They both are in the domain called eukarya, because they're eukaryotes. They're both in the animal kingdom. The phylum is chordata, because they have uh, backbones. They are in the class mammalia, because they are mammals. They are in the order carnivora, the family canidae, the genus canis, and then their species are different. The coyote is canis latrans, and the uh, gray wolf is canis lupus. So they have everything in common except for the very most specific thing, which is the species itself. So if you need a mnemonic to help you remember the order for uh, how they go, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, you can uh, think of this. Dreamy King Philip came over for good soup. So D-K-P-C-O-F-G-S. That is how you can remember the order in which they are from the least uh, specific to the most specific. Um, here's some fun ones that may help you remember a little bit more. Uh, didn't know Popeye's chicken offered free gizzard strips. Do kangaroos prefer cake or frosting, generally speaking? Or how about, darn, Kevin's poor cow only feels good sometimes. And then one of my favorites, dumb kids playing cards on freeways get smashed. So, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Great way to remember it, use a mnemonic. So now let's talk about the last thing, which is binomial nomenclature. Uh, bi means two, nomial refers to name, nomenclature is naming system. So this is the international system for naming organisms, how we do it. So there are three rules that they need to follow. The scientific names of an organism needs to have Latin or Greek roots. The genus is capitalized and the species is, in, is lowercase, that's the first letter of each. And it's always in italics or it is underlined, not both, but one or the other. So the scientific names for humans, modern humans, are is a Homo sapiens. Homo is the genus, sapiens is the species, so you can write it in italics or underline like it is shown right here. So you can see Greek or Latin roots, the underline or italic thing is there, and also we've got the capitalized genus and the lowercase species. So why is this important? Well, scientific names are going to help scientists communicate a lot better. Because when you get things like a roly-poly, which is also called a pill bug, which is also called a sow bug, which is also called a potato bug, depending on what part of the country or the world you live in, it's kind of hard to know what you're talking about unless you know every single little 
um, uh, detail about uh, an insect or some other organism and what they call it in different parts of the world. If you have a genus and a species name, that is very specific. That helps scientists communicate across different uh, areas of the world. Uh, and just for fun fact here, it's estimated there's about 8.7 million eukaryotic species on Earth. Um, still, scientists are pretty skeptical about that number because only about 6.5 million of those species are on land. A little over 2 million are from the ocean. The ocean is seven, over 70% uh, of our Earth. There's probably lots and lots of species we haven't discovered yet. Some scientists think that number is upwards of 100 million. Some even think towards a trillion. Uh, point is, there are species being discovered every day and just adding to the list, but that is the current count right now.